Are y'all ready for this in the comments? Go ahead, let, let us Listen, know if you're ready for this. Stay ready. I tell you that much. Okay, so, ready. okay, your first kiss was where? Oh. Damn. That's something <laughs> you I said you stay ready. No, no, I stay ready, but that was like a dip. That's, I'm not going to lie. Now you have me thinking that. I'm going to have to write the I like more. that. Where was my first kiss? I think my Where first kiss was um in Nagoya Primary. That was my first school in Jamaica. Nice. And yeah, so what it what what uh grade? Now I say fifth, sixth grade. Oh uh -huh. how <laughs> sweet. So does it give you good feeling we now that you're going back to that? Does it give you a good no. feeling? <laughs> no? no? Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, thank you for being, you know, thank you for playing along with the game. Just wanted to break that the ice. That was a fun question, though, because now you got me thinking. Good. But good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate you playing along with us. So I like to do the icebreakers, and then now I'm going to transition into um, a, a pretty serious topic, but it's um, very relevant to the time. And I see the numbers are going up. Y'all showing up. Thank you for joining. Come through. Come through. So wellness, health, mental health, with us coming off the year and a half that we just had with mm -hmm. so much devastation and tragedy, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they did, there was a lot of blessings too. But mm -hmm. I want to ask you a real question because you have fans that are here and they want to mm -hmm. hear from you. I want you to be transparent with us, please. Let mm -hmm. me know. Let us know. How are you honestly doing? How are you holding up? Before we get into all everything else, how are you doing? Real, real, to be honest, um, I'm doing good. I'm doing way better. Like, when the pandemic first started, I was very nervous, very scared. Um, did it, I'm already a person that's very paranoid. So okay. just me being a paranoid person and just going through where we have to wear a mask and we have to get hand sanitizer and do this. And just like me always being worried, like I could control myself to be safe, but like, how is my mom doing? Like, you know, like who is she around? Or maybe my mom is staying inside, but maybe my brother's outside or maybe my little sister's outside. So, you know, like it was very um scary, very, very scary for me. Um, Now I'm doing good, but still very cautious. Like when it's time for me to go out, sometimes, you know, I get, um, like bad anxiety sometimes like it's all fun and games until i have to be around a lot of people like you know mm. what i mean just being like you know i hope whoever i'm staying around or i'm gonna be around they're being as cautious as i am and you know they're being safe and i have asthma so i can't mm. afford to get sick you know what okay. i mean so yes. it's just where i'm in a situation where it puts me to wear a mask all the time and it's very uncomfortable and it's crazy because i had this question um asked to me today and every time i i get asked a question i think back to myself like it, it reminds me of how nervous it gets me if that okay. makes sense yes it does and i'm sorry yeah. i wasn't trying to trigger anything bad i just genuinely no, want to know how you're doing okay because i know sometimes people ask that you know how are you doing and they don't yeah really because it's know. Artists, sometimes you never know um and that's a real question you ask and as artists sometimes you never know how you really don't how artists is really doing because we're good with putting up a front and, you know, good with acting like everything is okay when we're not okay. Especially being, and I'm not saying regular people and normal people doesn't go through this, but being an artist, you have to always, you just have to do what you got to do. So no, your fans them don't really want to see you come on here crying every time and, you know, whining every time. It's just like, you know, you got to tough it up and get through the day and go cheer everybody else along. And I, I completely understand where you're coming from. And that's another reason why I wanted to ask you. And I, again, I thank you for your transparency because I think we need to understand that as people, like athletes and celebrities, you all aren't superheroes. You are human. You all have feelings. And you yeah. wear your feelings on your sleeve just like anyone else. And I think a lot of times people just look at you all like you're some superhero supernatural you know you you just you can take it because you make the money you're out here you can take whatever we whatever they throw and to be to real say, with you to be real with you artists are most most of the time the artists are the ones that can't take it because you already deal with your emotions in your music and if you're a writer you deal with way more emotions in your music and if you're not a writer but someone is writing for you based on what you're going through in your life 
you have to hear it some way, somehow. You know what I mean? So yes. I deal with all my emotions in my music. And that's mm -hmm. how my music, if you listen to Hood Celebrity, my music, every song have a different vibe because every song have a different personality and a different feel. And based off what I'm going through, I might be in a happy mood. Um, I might be in a sad mood, you know. I might be feeling down or whatever it is, but I try not to put it all in my music at the same time. Sometimes when I get sad, I don't write, you know. Okay. Just so I don't push that energy out there on anyone else. Well, that's the actual perfect transition to the next question I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. For anyone out there that this is their very first time seeing your beautiful face and they want to they get in tune with your catalog of work, your body of work, how mm -hmm. would you describe your music to anyone out there that's just getting familiar with you? My music is different. It's a natural feel. It's just a vibe. I always say, like, I always tell my fans, like, you know the vibe. Like, you got a beautiful smile, by the way. I had to say that. Oh, thank um, you. And do you I have your grill in? Do you have your grill in today? No, it's funny. I saw you with your grill, and I was like, damn, I should have put mine on. Because I thought you were going to have yours, so I'm like, I better not have stuff. I, I better have mine in, too. I saw you with it when you first came, and I was like, oh, I should have put my grills on. It looks beautiful <laughs> on you. Looks thank nice you. It looks beautiful on you, too, and the nose ring. We got the nose thank ring, Thank you so too. much. Thank you so much. But, okay. yeah, man, like, my music is just it's just a vibe, you know, and that's just who I am. Like, I'm just in real life, like, and that's why I always say in a real life. Because in real life, I'm just a vibe. I try to okay. make people happy and just spread that positivity where you get that feel. You could get lit. You could get in that bougie. You could get in reality, which I have a lot of reality songs, you know? Like, it's just a vibe. And you're going to get different vibes. So what was the inspiration? Because I see in the comments, I've seen some people saying walk, walking trophy. They're calling uh -huh. you a walking trophy, which you are. You are a queen. Because we got the whole and trophy gang. We got the trophy gang. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's my thing, trophy gang. So what was your inspiration behind the song? Walking trophy was just really just me being in my room. And like I said, again, in that vibe. Like, you know, that's just how I was feeling that day. Like, just learning how to love myself. Like, I'm a walking trophy. Look in the mirror and just tell yourself these things without you hearing it from anyone else. You know, sometimes we need people opinion so much and how people feel about you is really just an opinion. It's not a fact. Only you know the facts about yourself. So Walking Trophy is just a woman empowerment record, a record for women to, to listen to it. And when, once you listen to it, you get to feel that vibe. You should love yourself. And, you know, you compliment yourself and just feel how, the upliftment. How did it feel? I saw a video of you singing it with a bunch of little girls back home in Jamaica. How did it feel okay. like to see those little beautiful brown girls singing along with you? What does that do for you? It makes me feel great. It makes me feel great because as a kid, I didn't have no one telling me I was a walking trophy. My mother used to tell me I'm beautiful, of course, because in my house, that's all. Like, you couldn't be in a Jamaican household and feel like you're ugly. Like, you have to know that you're beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And some people may take it as being cocky, but it's just, we, they push that confidence in you. So it, it makes me feel good to know that I was able to spread that back, you know, spread that and make them little girls in Jamaica know that you are a walking trophy. Like, you're beautiful. Whether you're dark skin, light skin, short hair, long hair, fat, skinny, you're beautiful, and you got to own that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how difficult this next question is going to be to answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway because mm -hmm. maybe you have an answer for us. So out of all your, your whole catalog, everything, you, all the music you've ever produced yourself, mm -hmm. what is your absolute and I hate to use the word favorite because I'm sh all of them, I would imagine, are your babies. Mm -hmm. But what's that one song that's your favorite, period? Like, and that's a hard question. Of yours. Like I said, again, it's a vibe, right? So sometimes, like, one of my favorite, 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 because I have a lot of favorite. But, like, this one is one of my favorite. And as the day goes by, it becomes more of my favorite. Is um, a, It's called A Daughter's Cry. And it's my favorite because... It took me so long. Like, I'm a very private person. And okay. when I say private, as you know, a lot of things still bother me. And like you said, like, people think artists are not human beings. So a lot of things I still go through in my personal life that still bothers me, like um, not having a father, you know, and stuff like that. So when I was able to, like, really, you know, speak and express myself and help someone else out there as well, it made me feel good. It made me feel wow. real great that I could really open up and tell my story so if another little girl was going through that without having a father or you know just a single mother going through that they didn't feel like they was alone you know yeah and i i love that i mm -hmm. love that and tell us the song again so we it's can... called a daughter's cry a and, daughter's cry um 
yeah, like that record, just coming out with it, I went through a lot with like, you know, my mom, you know, at first when she heard it, she was very upset. Like, you know, like growing up in a Caribbean household, and this is a hard conversation for me, so I'm probably not going to try to dwell on it for too long, but okay. growing up in a Caribbean household, like there's a lot of things that we wasn't allowed to speak about, you know? You wasn't allowed to speak on it. Like, no one needs to know your business. You know what I mean? Like, no one needs to know what you're going through. And no one needs to know that you're, uh, I'm a single mother or you didn't have a father. You know what I mean? Like, people would laugh at you or they would make fun of certain things. So, when my mother heard the record for the first time, we argued and she was very upset. And she sat me down and she said, you know, you actually teach me something too. Mm. And that was really big of my mother to, like, you know, like, to really say I'm sorry. And it, it was a lot. You know, she actually gets to hear it in my record and it made her cry because it's the truth. That is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just, I want to know, and I, I, and I'm not, I don't want to dwell on this too long because I, yeah, I'm again, getting nervous. I, I don't get nervous. No, but I, I just want to say this and I, I hope it again, no triggers or anything, mm -hmm. but do you think on the positive, the beautiful side of mm -hmm. where you come from in your culture that that actually kind of helped you to be a celebrity because you know, you don't necessarily want to tell all your business because you don't want everybody's opinion. You don't want everyone spilling their negativity, that mm -hmm. energy into your life. So is there also that positive about it that it kind of got you ready for where God has you now? 100%. 100%. It helped me to be stronger. It definitely does. I love that. I absolutely love that. So, okay, let's switch gears. Tomorrow. Friday, yeah, tomorrow, June 18th, what, we champions tomorrow. We champions all the time, right? Because we're trophies. Facts. So we're Facts. champions. Facts. Talk about your single champions. What can we expect? What are you dropping? Give us some exclusives. It should Man, talk live. Champion, champion is dropping tomorrow. And another record, like, for people to know, and I always try to drop songs that have strong, just strong topics, like, champion like everyone should feel like a champion we just came out of a whole pandemic we're still in the pandemic but it's stuff is getting better right, right. so if you survive covid man like you're a champion if you're a single mother and you survived and you doing what you got to do for your kids you're staying there you're staying strong you're you're a champion if you're going through anything mental health like it's a lot of things that the world is dealing with right now you're a champion if you wake up and you don't feel okay but you're still pushing yourself to know that it's it's the light there at the end. You're a champion. And I really want people to know, like, like I said again with my music, when I write my music, that's the energy makes me feel is the energy that I want people to feel when they hear my music. And the same way it uplifts me and make me know I'm a champion. And to keep going, champions never give up. That's what we do. No matter how hard the fight gets, we keep going. Even so when you lose, you get up and you keep going. So where, when exactly, what time does it drop? Where can people find it? It drops at 12 midnight. Okay. It's on all platforms. It's going to be on Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. Every, okay. every platform. The link is also on my bio, so y'all can go pre-save it now as well. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And congratulations in advance on that. Thank you so much. So staying on beautiful blessings on blessings on blessings. Mm-hmm. Times Square is your is wait is your face up in Times Square? Wait, <laughs> tell, tell us about that. Let me sit down for this story. Tell us about that. What's up so, with you in Times Square? It's funny, right? With the Times Square, I was very surprised. So, my team, though, I don't do good with surprises. Like, I'm I'm a very anxious person, and I know it's it's that's something I'm actually working on too. Like, how to not be so anxious and just learn how to deal with things, you know, day by day. But I'm a very anxious person. So you can't tell me, like, yo, I'm telling you, this shit is going to get crazy. Like, yo, um, just meet me over there. I'm not the type of person you can tell that to. I want to know why. Why am I going over there? Like, so I see everybody driving. I see my manager them driving. I'm like, um, but I'm already done with my shoot. Like, where are we going? And they're like, nah, don't worry. To me, I, listen, I'm from the Bronx. I don't trust nobody. You know what I mean? So I start thinking, like, where are we going? When I got to Times Square and I saw them parked up, and I'm like, okay, why is everybody parking right here? Like, what is going on? Yeah. And I see all the bill, the big billboards and stuff, and I'm like, okay, so we're just sitting here parked up for nothing. And when I saw my face popped up, it was like, I got so emotional. 
it was like a feeling that I, I can't describe if I wanted to because it was just like in the moment, you know. I was excited. I was happy. Like, I called my mother at, like, 3 in the morning, and she was just like, wow. Like, my family, like, everybody was just so happy. My aunt, my cousins, like, yo, you really have to – because sometimes I don't get – I don't really get the chance to celebrate, you know, like, my moments. Like, and that's another problem I have. I don't really get to celebrate my moments because I always want to push more. Like, okay, I got billboard. I'm on Times Square. All right, it's, it's still work. Like, it's still work that needs to get done. Like, I'm not there yet. Like, let's keep going. But sometimes you really have to celebrate your moment. And that was one of the moments that I cried, man. I cried. Well, you know who the real MVP is? Yeah. This, that whole story is the videographer that shot it. Because I saw it on your Instagram page. I think it was yeah. the exact moment that you saw yourself and Correct. you were on a road. Correct. Correct. And, and you're was, like. Um, that was um, DJ Maddow. DJ Maddow um, caught the moment. That's my DJ. DJ Maddow caught the moment because he knows me so well, you know. And yeah. um, Shaft also caught the moment. Like, everybody just had their phones out where I couldn't help it. Like, I couldn't help it. My boobs was out because I just came back from shooting. So I forgot that I still had the pasties on. And I got so excited. I was just like, yeah, let's turn up. Like, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm on time scale. My boobs is out. I see everybody looking. I'm like, oh, shit. Then I look down. But it was just one of those moments where it's like, yo, like, listen, being born in Jamaica and Coming to the United States was a dream for me. Mm -hmm. That already was just a major dream, you know? And being a, the little girl from the Bronx, that was just, like, working and, you know, taking the train. And it just showed, like, you could do it. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, and, I'm, and I'm hoping for anybody that's on here, like, to give people hope that you could do it. Like, I really came from the bottom. It wasn't, like, never had no rich parents, never had no rich, you know? like family members or just with a gold spoon in my mouth. I really came from the bottom and people to know, like, if you keep going, you could do it. Like I went from paying $150 for, to do a video shoot, you know, like getting $150 for a show. Sometimes having people tell me, I don't got no money to pay you, but just come and turn up, you know? And just those moments right there, just let people know, like, and to all my fans that are on here. And even if you're a new fan, old fan, or a fan of the Sheen magazine, to let you guys know, like, don't give up on your dreams. Like, really, the the gold is to keep going. You can't lose. You can never defeat someone that keeps going. You only, you only defeat it when you stop. When you keep going, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Some people process takes longer. You know what I mean? Like, some people process happens faster. Some people process takes longer. It might take me... A year, it might take you two years. It might take you two years. It might take somebody else 10. But the goal is to never stop. And it goes back again into champion. A champion never stops, no matter what. We keep going. If I would have right. stopped, I would have I wouldn't never made Billboard. I would have never be able to see myself on Times Square. Like, that's a dream come, come, come through for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. to give people hope, man, like, whatever you're doing, don't stop. Keep going. I love that, and I, I completely agree with you. Something that I would like to ask you about, because oftentimes I interview celebrities and up-and-coming artists. I have my own independent media outlet as well, and That's shout out cool. to Sheen. Thank you. Shout out to Sheen That's Magazine cool. for giving me the opportunity to be on their platform, and, ha yeah. and I have my own. And so something in talking to a lot of celebrities and up-and-coming artists, something that can be hard for them and I would love to get your insight on if you could mm -hmm. just give us you know your opinion on it is having a team or having friends and different things and as you're growing and as you're getting more success you're starting to realize that that you know maybe that big circle you have mm -hmm. now is a dot you mm -hmm. know it's it, mm -hmm. you're not they're not there anymore you don't have that those people there you don't have that physical support that you did mm -hmm. so I would just like to know, you know, because it is something that oftentimes comes up, mm -hmm. how, what advice would you give to anyone out there that's dealing with that, with just being solo dolo, mm -hmm. you know, feeling like that? I mean, the good thing, which I'm going to speak on my situation and then I give people advice, like a lot of people, like my team that I started with, majority of them are still here, which that's a blessing. And they're still here because we keep each other grounded. So if I do something you don't like, pull me to the side and nip it in the butt. 
and that's really big. Don't wait for it to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know what I mean? And um, most of my friends that I started with that been supporting me, um, they're still around. Maybe a couple of still, you know, not here. Not everybody's going to come with you, but the ones that I love and I have in my heart and I knew that would stay, they stayed. So it made me feel a little bit better. Some of them that I also did love that I have in my heart that I thought they would stay, didn't stay, right? Which that's also fine, you know? People grow and we might not see eye to eye anymore, but it never have to be an issue. Now, um, for people who fall out or doesn't have their whole team or whatever it is, um, that's also fine. Like sometimes in life, you have to do certain things by yourself, you know? And that's how it is. And you should never feel less like you can't make it happen because you don't have a, a group of people you know what i mean like i've lost some people that i thought i probably wouldn't do without and not just in business but in friendships and i was like oh damn we've been friends for so long like i can't see myself not being friends with this person right but things happen and in life it's nothing that human being can um get through and we don't know that until we have to go through it right so losing a friend losing your team like i said again the goal is for you not to lose you. Mm. Now, the day you lose you, then everything is over, right? Wow. But if you lose a couple of people here and there and a couple of friends here and there, anybody you lose was never supposed to be around in the first place. You don't lose wow. people that are supposed to be around because whatever God do in your life, that's how it was designed to be. And it took me a long time. Like, And I'm speaking like this because it took me a lot of hurt. I used to lose people and cry. I used to lose people and not eat. I used to lose people and not sleep. I lost friends that is like, damn, like I felt devastated. Like the world, like I'm a cancer. Like when I love you, I love you. And I love very mm -hmm. deep and I love very hard. So it's people that I love and I lost them. And I'm like, fuck, like, like it's like, a, you know, even friendships become relationships. It's like we're, we're together, just not having sex, you know? So yes. you could get over anything. The goal is for you not to lose you. Once you keep going, everything else will fall in place and more people will come. And the ones that's supposed to be there will be there. And the ones that's supposed to go will go. What is, and I, everything you said, I completely agree. And, and I love what you said, and especially acknowledging God like that. I'm big on that. So I love that. Um, what is something that surprised you about the industry that, again, it was a surprise. You had no idea that it was like, like, it's like that, like just something that just kind of you know, <laughs> made you kind of like, wait, what? This is how this is done? Like I thought whatever do you have something like that in reality it's just business you know okay and that's when you start taking stuff like that you don't take it personal because okay. it's just business when i say it's just business i mean like that's what surprised me with the industry it's like oh shit like oh damn like all right shit like all right this song is this song is lit all right this song is the juice is dying out now oh shit okay all right, that person went over there. Oh, shit. All right, let me get another song, you know? And okay. oh, shit, this song is lit. Oh, the juice is dying out now. Oh, shit. All right, they went to somebody else. Okay, <laughs> oh, shit, let me get another song. You know, it's just, it's, nev it's nothing personal, man. It's really just business. When you're hot, you're hot. When you're not hot, you're not hot. And the good thing is anyone could get hot, you know? Mm. So you just have to stay hot. And you're going to have some people that genuinely support you, whether you're hot, whether you're cool, whether you're on fire. You have those people who will always support you because they was always genuine. They genuinely wanted to see you win. And you always have the people who just supported you because you had a hot record. And it's like, okay, you don't have that record no more. Come with another one. And when you get that, that record again that people love, they're going to support you again. You know, you have everyone for different things. But like I said, again, it's just when you learn as an artist that it's just business, you just stay hot. Keep the fire burning. <laughs> so, so something that I I think is is really cool to know about you, and I you know your fans they probably already know this. Maybe mm -hmm. they do, maybe they don't. But you were a violinist at one point in your life, and I believe you played sports too. Um, I don't think you do it anymore. You can elaborate on that. But the reason why I'm asking you this question is because you have a young following mm -hmm. and you have parents you know ch parents that have young children mm -hmm. and a lot of times because they are young 
-hmm. they're immature. They don't understand how learning the, how to play an instrument like you did, even if you stop, yeah. how that helps you later on in life, how learning how to play a sport helps you, even if you stop mm -hmm. later on in life. So I would love to know how did, was there something about playing the violin as a child? I think you were a child when you did it, mm -hmm. that helped you anything about that discipline or the process or whatever that you're actually implementing in your career now and or sports, because I think you play sports. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really, and I have to be honest, like it really, when first, let me say about like this. So when I went to, um, I went to high school for violin and dance. It's called HSVD. It's, in, um, it's actually inside of Morris High School. So okay. when I went to high school for violin and dance, I really just wanted to do dance. Okay. So I love music and it was a hip hop and stuff like that in the dance and that was, you know, everything played a part. But um, when I heard violin at first, I was like, violin, like, this is different. Like, I don't know if you know damn violin, but you <laughs> had to take that class too for you to even do dancing. So as I started taking it, I started falling in love with playing the violin because you learn, you know, they teach you. And um, it just teach me to just really not be scared of anything. And if you want to do something, just do it because I'm from I'm from the Bronx, you know what I mean. I'm from Fordham, so I think that says it all. If you're from the Bronx, if you know anybody from the Bronx, like they used to make fun of me for walking home with the violin. I have this big thing on my back, you know what I mean? And it's like, yo, come on, like, come on, Tina, like, what you doing with this shit? So <laughs> it just teach you too, like, just to really do whatever you want to do, do whatever makes you happy. It's okay to be different. That was very different for me back in the days because nobody that I know was bringing home a violin and they back to Fordham Road. Like, everybody was looking at me like, okay, like, what's going on with her? I used to go home and play the violin. My mother used to be like, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you going to teach up your marriage? Are you on your... I don't want nothing nice and I'm going to oh. Because it was, you know, the violin is loud too. So my mother, okay. I'm coming home and my mother's tired. She don't want to hear no violin. <laughs> She's looking at me like... You and your teacher ain't paying my bills. You're going to have to check oh, my wow. balance. Oh, play the violin at school. Play the violin. <laughs> like, so it was different. It just really hit me like, when you want to do something, just do it. You know what I mean? Like, it could be weird. It's different. Do it. Still do what you want. And I, I put that in my music as well. Do what you want. Do what makes you happy. I love that. So I'm, I'm not going to hold you too long, much longer, <laughs> but I, I want to ask you... Um, just a few more questions won't be too much longer. Mm -hmm. So I did some investigative work because I'm a journalist, right? Mm -hmm. So I was on your Instagram page. Uh huh. Girl, tell us what your workout regime is. Like, what do you eat? The, your body is amazing. Thank you so amazing. much. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. you had a, you're welcome. You did a video, a promo for something and, I, somehow or another, you were like the abs, but it's the the abs for me. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you, you know, you're actually right. I don't even know what else you're talking about. Like, you were just gorgeous. So can you tell us, you know, is this just a natural thing? Or do you have to, again, are you working out every single day? Do you eat what you want? Not, not tell us. Day, but I'm working out. Like, today, um, I did, like, four miles with my um my manager. See, he just put the so. Listen, we got um I Am Shaf in here. Big shout to um Shaf KSR the fucking label y'all see the vibes, but um Shaf come pick me up and he have this booth camp thing that he's been doing. So like I said, I'm super into working out. So for people who for people who don't know, you, you can hear me, right? I can hear you. Yeah, somebody just tried to call me. So um for people who don't know, like when I first started, I was like 130 pounds, which nothing was wrong with that, but I wanted abs so badly and people would be like, no, but your body is fine. Like you look good, but it was still like, I want abs. Like I want six packs. I always wanted that. And I learned that the stuff that I was eating, I couldn't get abs. Like me eating bun and cheese on <laughs> ackee and sawfish and dumping on banana and stoopies on rice with curry goat and all these stuff I was eating. And every meal, supper gent. My mother used to blend up, um, peanut with supper gent and oats and I wasn't getting those six packs. So <laughs> I completely changed my whole diet, right? Wow. I don't I barely eat dairy stuff. I don't mm. rock with dairy. Like wow. To each his own, but I don't rock with dairy like that. One, dairy builds mucus. Mm -hmm. And mucus 
makes you sick. The body not supposed to have too much mucus. And like I said, I have asthma. So when I was eating a lot of dairy stuff, sometimes my chest would get tight. And even as a slim girl, I would go up the steps and I'm out of breath. Like, you know, it just, I, I started feeling like that weight on me. And um, I don't drink milk like that at all. I don't really eat a lot of beef stuff. Once in a while, I do. I don't really eat pizza. This is this yeah. pizza and stuff. Pizza and stuff is like a treat for me. Okay. It's, yeah, it's like a once in a while treat. Like I have to wow. really, really be in a good mood. I drink a lot of green juice, kale, okay. spinach. Um, I drink a lot of smoothies, like homemade wow. smoothies. Sometimes I go to um the the vegan smoothie spot or like you know or the organic smoothie spot. Um. I don't eat after certain times. Like right wow. now, it's seven thirty-eight. I'm about to eat after I get off this interview, but it's oh, only okay. because it's only because I was running with Shav today, and we did at least five, six laps around that thing. Around wow! That thing. And then we walked the whole trail, so we burned six hundred and ninety calories today. So yeah, so I gotta get my calories back. Right, it's only right that I have to get my calories back. So now I'm eating late, but I don't eat after seven o'clock. You shouldn't because you're going to bed and all that stuff is resting in your stomach and it's just mm -hmm. not good. Drink okay. a lot of water, a lot heavy on the water. My workout routine for people who want abs, right? Mm -hmm. It's not hard. My uncle came from jail and he was showing me all the jail workouts. So now I could work out with no, I could work out with no workout equipment. That's what's my up. mind is so trained to it. Mm -hmm. Like doing planks, I tell people all the time, planks. If you're not good with crunches, I'm not a fan of crunches. I don't like okay. how it makes me feel. I feel like putting my head down and back, down and back, it kind of gives yeah. me like a busy vibe, and I don't like it. So um, I do planks, which is a whole body workout. Wow. Jump rope, whole body workout. I have a jump rope that have like it's like weights. Weights. Yeah. So I do that. That's a whole body workout. Wow. Um, I do a lot of push-ups. For females that's on here, and we try to do it the easy way, which we do the um the female push-ups. Try to do the male push-up, even if you could do one. Try to do wow. one. Try to do the male push-up. It makes a big difference. You're literally pushing up and lifting your your own body weight, mm -hmm. and just like salads and stuff. Like like I said, it's just really when you want that body, you have to change your diet. You cannot okay. want to be fit and you go to McDonald's. You know what I mean? Even when yeah. I have a McDonald's day, I know my body feels it. I feel the difference. I be having yeah. those days. I'm not going to sit here and I can okay. have a McDonald's day. I have, a, I have McDonald's day. I have Wendy's day. The other day, I caught myself on a Wendy run. Wow. Wendy's run. Like, I caught myself getting Wendy's two times a week. I said, oh, no, hold on. Uh -huh. What you doing? I mm -hmm. caught myself having Burger King runs. I'm like, whoa, hold on. And another key thing, right? And I want you to try this, too, for yourself. Okay. I will. Whatever you eat, right? Mm -hmm. Try to try to drink a cup of tea. Like right now, I'm speaking to you. I'm drinking tea. Ah, right? okay. Try to drink a cup of tea, a cup of green tea, because tea is is gonna help with your digestive system. Okay. So if you notice, Do sometimes you... you see those old people, like you see them eat and then they drink their tea. Like it really <laughs> helps bring that oil down. Okay. Just so eat. drink right after you eat. Right after tea? you eat. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So That's wait, are you a coffee drinker? Because coffee is my I don't drink coffee. weakness. No, I, I love not drink okay. I don't. okay. Coffee. Okay. Coffee. If you ask me, and I know it's gonna be bad, and you probably gonna have to. I was a coffee drinker. No. You, I was okay. a coffee drinker. I used to be the. I was the girl who go to um Dunkin' Donuts. Like I said, <laughs> everybody have to take his time. So I'm not gonna expect. I'm gonna tell you this, and you're gonna go and change your whole life. I was the girl who go to Dunkin' Donuts and be like, let me get a um iced coffee, extra caramel, extra whipped cream. You know what I mean? That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> We are the same person. And, and, and let me tell you something. If you want to piss me off, uh, oh. if you don't put that extra caramel, I'll go back. I'll go back and tell you. And the little, the little nice sugar donuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, all I'm going to say is this right now. I'm going to need you to be my personal trainer. I'm going to need you to follow. I need, we need to follow each other after this. I'm because I, DM, me, DM me when we get off, too, so I can follow you. Oh, I am. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, okay. I to go to Dunkin' Donuts and get the sprinkled donuts and tell them, listen to me, warm it up on 10 seconds. I was that person. Like, I was slim, but I was a nasty eater. 
Like, let me get the sprinkle donuts, the glazed, the glazed donuts, and tell them, listen, and warm it up for 10 seconds. I was very specific. Caramel, extra caramel, extra whipped cream. Make that a large, please. Wait, Thank you. Wait, wait, hold up. No, hold up. I am so sorry, because now, you know, we like best friends now. Wait, let me tell you this, right? <laughs> when I knew I was like, I have a problem, I walked into Dunkin' Donuts, right? Yeah. I got my favorite Dunkin' Donuts because they make it like I like it. They've been kind of falling off a little bit. I walked in there. Let me tell you this. Dude behind the register was like, large, hot caramel latte with whipped cream and caramel. I didn't even get up to the register all the way yet. I had a mask on. And he knew my order. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. I think I have a problem. Large, hot Caramel latte with whipped cream and caramel. Yup. Ooh, that was my favorite, especially when it's like the winter time and it's cold. Ooh. <laughs> especially when it was cold. That was like the worst. When it was oh. cold, I used to get it just to hold my hand on it and make sure my hands get really warm and then drink it with the glazed donut. I'm telling you, the glazed donut was the banger. The cheese, oh. the Bacon, egg, and cheese. I'm telling you, my, my diet was nasty. Oh. Okay, wait. One more question about this, because I feel like people are probably, they may be like, okay, what, what's going on here? Like, they're going on a tangent. But yeah. I just want to ask you this. How long have you been eating right? Like, because I need to get myself together. How long have you been eating um, better? I honestly, would say better. I've been eating better for, let me see. I stopped this. this. Going on three years. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. So when people were saying, when people were telling congratulations. me, when people were telling me, um, Hood, oh my God, you lost, you lost a lot of weight. Like, oh my God, Hood, like, I was like, no, like, this is good. This is good. Because I felt better. I felt so much better. My body really feels better. Like, you could tell the difference. You could tell the difference. I could stay up longer. I could, I could run longer. I could work out longer. I could, it just, it's just a difference. When I'm performing my stamina is up there. Like, I could run and perform while I'm performing. It feels better. The body the body would tell you, man. If you listen to your body, you know everything. And that's why you are a champion. Mm-hmm. In a real life. And because I was watching your video of you in the boxing ring, I'm like, is this just a fo I mean, you look great. But I'm like, is she just acting like she knows what she's doing? Or clearly you know what you're doing. Yeah, I actually did boxing for a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did yeah. boxing for a year. Um, that was something I fell in love with also before I started taking music really, really, really serious. Like, wow. I was super in love with boxing. I always wanted to do boxing. That was another dream that my mother shut down. My Jamaican mother shut down. She was looking at me like, this ain't happening. <laughs> like, he wow. like a, she was like, no, you're, you're going to have problems. People going to be punching you in your head. Like, mm, this is yeah. not good. And I'm like, no, that's not true. Like, because I fell in love with the sport. I really love boxing. It teaches you a lot. You know, and just so, to be grounded. Okay, so celebrities are doing a lot of boxing matches. Is there anybody like if some if they approach you with, you know, the right situation, who would you want to get in the ring with? Listen, I get in the ring with anybody. Oh, hey. Yeah, I get in the ring hey. with anybody because like it's just a win. You you either win or you lose, right? When it comes to stuff like that. But I get in the ring with anybody because with boxing, like it's just a sport. Mm -hmm. And I love it, so it wouldn't really matter to me. Okay. Yeah. So what I want to do because um, you need to eat, mm -hmm. you need to eat, and we need to. We definitely, unfortunately, we need to put a uh, a bow on this. Mm -hmm. This is the very last thing that um, I want to ask you. I know you have done a lot of interviews with a lot of major outlets, including mm -hmm. now Sheen Magazine. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you: Is there one question that no one ever asks you? Is there something that, that you just... Mm, that's a good question. I'm trying to think. Thank you. I don't know. Damn, you, you, you gave me a couple things to think about. I don't know. I think no one ever asked me what was my first kiss. <laughs> Yay! No that was something different. Like, that was really something different. So that really popped my cherry. No one never asked me that. <laughs> Yeah, so that that right there <laughs> popped my cherry. Cause now I had to go back and thinking like, oh shit, who was my first? <laughs> and
and it's funny because I remember now even the name, and I'm see, I'm, you know how you remember the name and you put the face with it? Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. Well, let me just say this, okay? Um, I love Jamaica. It's one of the most you. beautiful places on the earth. I love so much. the people like you. I love New York. The fact that you are a combination of both of those places that I Thank love, you so much. that is probably the reason why, again, we are now BFFs. That's so, fucking dope. That's dope. I mean, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be working it. out. I'm going to be working out tomorrow. Okay. And I'm going to be listening to you. I'm going to have you all up in my IG story. Make sure you do that plank. I, oh, I am. That. Let's do that plank. So I'm going I'm to, um, we're going to start off with, give me a month of one minute plank every day. I'm going to tag I'm you. I'm going to start it. you off with one minute. Okay. And tag me. I am. And I have to respond. And okay. I, have to, I have to follow your process too. So one minute of planking every day. Got Usually it. I say two minutes, but since you're a new and you're a beginner,